Welcome back to Harvard. Gay rights advocates won a major victory on Friday when New York State became the largest state to legalize same-sex marriage. Governor Andrew Cuomo managed to get a Republican majority Senate to bring the bill to the floor, and four Republican state senators broke ranks with their party to pass the measure. Now, gay rights groups are looking to replicate this win across the country, of course. State Senator James Alisi was the first Republican to support gay marriage up in New York. S Senator, thank you so much for coming on Hardball. This must be a very interesting weekend in your life. Uh, what did you learn about American life and attitudes about uh, sexual orientation in the last three days since you cast this vote? I think that uh, the, the main message and what I learned, what I've known for a long time, is that equality doesn't know political boundaries. Equality doesn't apply just to Republicans and just to Democrats uh, any more than it should apply to heterosexual couples, uh, straight couples, or uh, gay couples. Well, what do you make of your party platform? I know nobody talks about party platforms, but the Republican National Party in your last convention said that they want a constitutional amendment that protects marriage as a union of a man and a woman. Do you, could you ever support a party platform like that? I can't now, obviously, because I've taken a vote uh, that is totally contrary to that kind of a platform offering. I believe that equality between a man and a woman and equality between someone of the same sex is still equality. Uh, you can have a marriage between a man and a woman over in Afghanistan, but that's an adult male and a 12-year-old girl. Uh, that's man and a woman. But, you know, those are extreme arguments. I think the Republican Party needs to understand that it is the party of Abraham Lincoln, and that was based on freedom and based on equality, and we need to apply that to all members of our society. They are our sons and daughters and our brothers and sisters, and uh, equality needs to apply to everybody. How much do you think uh, the, that fact that you just gave us played a part here, the fact that people now who are gay, who are born gay, and come out and tell their parents that maybe in their teen years, how important was that simple statement, not simple, but direct statement by young people to their relatives, their aunts and uncles, as well as their parents? How important was that coming out, if you will, in this development? Uh, it's vitally important because if you see the younger generations, there's a generational gap here as society starts to evolve on this issue and on other issues. I mean, if you look back at the issue of abortion many, many years ago, it's not in the same place that it was then. Uh, we evolve socially, and what drives this evolution as far as a social movement is concerned is a young group of people that look at things differently. They know that they have brothers and sisters. Uh, they know that they have co-workers. They know that they have people that they went to school with that are gay. They see them as just everyday people. And they put themselves in a place where if they were deprived of that kind of equality, they would be uncomfortable. And so the younger people that are moving this social involvement are the ones that I think will eventually spread this kind of uh, message of equality across the country. It's up to someone like like me, who's not as young as I'd like to be, uh, to listen to that and to listen to both sides and understand that we have to make this an opportunity for America to be what America was designed to be, and that right. is the freest land in the world. Thank you so much, sir. It reminds me, by the way, of one of those great changes of mind. Barry Goldwater back in the uh, 60s or 70s voted to let people at 18 vote after being argued with that if you have to fight for your country with the old draft system, you ought to be able to vote to decide who runs it. Thank you so much, Senator James Alisi from upstate New York, from Rochester, Glad for joining us. John Heilman is the national affairs editor for New York Magazine. John, this is a, obviously a very important guy here because he's a swing guy, a guy who's, who makes a decision. It's so rare in politics. Two years ago, he voted against uh, same sex. Now he voted for it. He said in the readings we've done with him and conversations with him, our producers, he said that uh, two years ago, he really didn't vote his conscience. Now he has. Yeah, and that was exactly how, you know, part of the way that Governor Cuomo and the supporters of this uh, uh, were able to get it done in New York was by going to people like that senator and saying uh, that we could tell that you were torn when you made this vote a couple and of years ago. And who they ago. bring into their offices? Big backers. Big, big backers. And it's one of the biggest differences between uh, New York and a lot of other places in the country where the money uh, in New York is, is, is concentrated on Wall Street. And although there are Republicans there, there are a lot of gay Republicans in New York. That's with not kids. And with, with kids. And get, get, with, uh, straight Republicans with gay children uh, and gay Republicans themselves who came in and were able to say, we're going to be there financially for you. And that made it a lot Okay, let's long. translate to what you're writing a book about. Again, you've written so well with Game Change. When you go into those states that are going to decide the next presidential election, yeah. North Carolina, Virginia, uh, Ohio, 
Is this going to cut against the movement for equality? Because there'll be people who will be resisting it. Well, look, I think, you know, you, you have to look. I mean, you're already starting to see a lot of stories about what's going to happen now. What we, are there going to, are, is the, 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 the movement for, for gay marriage going to be able to spread to, by state by state across the country? And as you look state by state, you know, New York is <laughs> New York. It's not, it's not the way a lot of swing it's states not Utah. are. It's not Utah. And it's not Ohio. And it's not, it's not North Carolina. It's not Virginia. Uh, the, the margins are much closer. It's a 50-50 proposition now. And in, in the long march of history, History, we know inexorably, I think. Could there be a backlash against what we're looking at? Well, I, th I think there's not, th I think the backlash potential is not that high for some of the same cultural and social reasons that you saw it actually happen in New York. And also because I think the Republican Party is likely to nominate someone who is not wanting to make an issue out of this. And if you look at someone will like Will they Mitt put Romney, on their platform again? Will they do this again? We want a constitutional amendment to guarantee that marriage is only male, male female. I think, that is, female. I, I think that is going to be one of the most interesting questions. You, know, you get down to Florida, to Tampa this summer, and you're going to see this real, they're going to be a real division because there are a lot of people in the Tea Party who are, in fact, also very strong cultural conservatives. There's going to be a strong movement in this direction. But if you have someone like a Mitt Romney or someone like a John Huntsman, who's the nominee, who knows that the way to win, their path to winning, is to stay focused like a laser beam on the economy, are oh, they yeah. going to want? Are they going to want to engage this? And so I'll I think tell you. you could easily see a situation like we've seen in many Republican conventions past, where you see a very extreme platform on something like abortion, but then the nominee, whether it's George W. Bush or Rob or Bob Dole, or goes or out. Reagan goes out and doesn't talk about it at all Reagan. in the fall election. Just try, try, tries to say, fine, it's in the platform, but don't talk to me about that. This brother. is a red-hot issue. I'll be surprised they can put it to sleep so well. But anyway, thank you, John Hahn. We'll sure. be watching it.